Well, it's officially here, the 2017 Roku Streaming Stick Plus. This is the new 4K version with a new remote that allows you to power on and off your TV and control the volume. So let's kind of dive in here and take a look at what's new with it. I'm gonna do a little unboxing right now, kind of show you the device, and then in this same video, we're gonna turn it on and give you an idea of how well it works. So let's dive in here and take a look. So right off the bat, this is the actual device itself. Let me take this plastic off because that's gonna cause all kinds of issues here. I can get it. They wrap this thing up nice to protect it, that's for sure. All right, so right here is the 26, or 17, excuse me, Roku streaming stick. Now they move the um, plug here. It's still a um, micro USB. Excuse me, that's just a, a regular USB. Um, to the side. Now to give you an idea of the old one, I guess I'll line it up based on the USB adapter, you can see, or the HDMI adapter, you can see it is noticeably smaller. Not hugely, or um, the older one's noticeably smaller. It's not hugely bigger, but it is a little bit bigger. So let's kind of keep going here. You got the manual, plug, um, HDMI extender, which is pretty cool. So if you don't um, want to block other ports or maybe it doesn't fit quite right on your TV, batteries for the remote, um, and the USB charger with the antenna. Now, let me get this stick, this uh, plastic off of it. There we go. Now this is the actual antenna for the device for Wi-Fi. So it's not over the air, it's a Wi-Fi antenna, but it's put onto the power stick to get it away from the device and help it become a uh, better Wi-Fi antenna. So that is everything that comes with it. Let's dive into the remote real quick. So you got, um, right off the bat, you have Netflix, Sling, Hulu, and Vudu on it. Now I bought this one at Walmart, so the non-Walmart versions will have a different one here. Um, it is both a wireless and, um, radio frequency point anywhere remote and a infrared. So you're gonna notice the, the IR blaster there. That is for controlling your TV's um, volume and power on it, so it's pretty cool. You got the voice control right here, so you can hit that button and talk to it, ask it to search for particular things. Bigger play pause button, so easier to detect the play pause button. It really stands out there. Fast forward, rewind, jump back, the star key. The home and regular one there is pretty identical. I mean, I got a Roku Ultra remote here, and you can kind of see the difference here. The um, remote or the voice command on that is a little different. The buttons themselves are pretty much same layout, but you notice the play pause is much bigger. I love that. The D-pad looks, maybe just the text is a little bit bigger on it. It looks a tiny bit bigger and then everything else is pretty much the same. So this is the 2016 Roku Ultra, um, not the 2017, just to be clear. So you can kind of see the difference, the improvements there in the remote. Well, let me go plug this in, do some testing, come back and let you know what back. Well, I've been playing with the Roku 2017 4K stick for a little while now, and you know, it's a pretty impressive stick. One thing to point out, I did say in the unboxing that there was an extension cord for HDMI. I misspoke, that's an extension cord for USB for the power supply, in case you wanted to plug it into the wall instead of your TV. There is no HDMI extender on it. So one little fix there, I apologize about that, but let's kind of dive in here. So on the left, I have the 2017 Roku 4K stick. On the right is the 2016 HD Roku stick. And I wanted to do a head to head to see if it's worth upgrading. Now there is minor differences. The one on the left is running the Roku OS 8. The one on the right is still running Roku OS 7.7. Um, .7. So notice the background is slightly different there. A few other changes, um, nothing real major in it, but it is some improvements and differences in the, um, in the UI. So, but you know, that doesn't really matter. The background is a slightly different purple and there's no bar across the top. Well, how does it actually work when I'm streaming stuff? That's what I really care about. So let's do an end user experience. Plenty of places to find out the specs of each one, which one has a faster processor and all that. What we're gonna care about is what it's like when I get it home and plug it in. So let's kind of launch Netflix here and get into it and show you what's new. Now, I was just 
in here, let's kind of launch into something different. Um, let's get into something in here. The ranch. Let's hit play at the same time, see which one comes up first. The 2016 stick a little bit faster. Not crazy, so let's keep going back here. Um, that 70s show, again, same experience. No, this menu is very similar in the menus, but the actual loading of the stream is a little bit faster on the newer version. I've been playing around with Netflix for a little while, and that's been pretty consistent. Why that is, maybe, maybe it's uh, the fact that it's not being taxed by the 4K side. Probably has more to do with the fact that the Roku 7 OS has been around for a while, and Netflix has tweaked their app to take best advantage of it, where on the Roku OS 8, it's not yet. That's my, the only thing I can think of right now. Let's jump into Amazon and kind of take a look at what they have here. Let's see which one loads quickest. This time, the 4K stick loaded a little faster. My daughter sure loves Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I can definitely tell you right off the bat, the 8 is going through the menus faster. See how much longer it takes here to load up. I'll just quickly hit play on both at the same time. You see the spinners start almost simultaneously, but the one on the right actually started a little bit faster. Let's back out. Um, I don't really want to let that play too long because Disney loves to claim videos. Let's jump into the Jack Ryan. Um, same spot, let's get hit play. Again, slightly faster on the older version. Let's back out here. So I can keep doing that, but you're gonna get the same experience. Menus seem to be faster on the newer one. The loading of video seems to be a little faster on the older one. Maybe that's because of 4K processing, I'm not sure. Let's quickly kind of scroll through here as quickly as we can. As you can see, much um, similar experience here on the speed of this. No real differences on scrolling through it. Let's look at the boot time. Let's go into systems and let's do a system restart. Give you an idea of how quickly they launch. You see the older one seemed to hang there for a moment, or excuse me, the newer uh, 4K one seemed to hang there. The older one seems to be just a moment faster. Slightly different Roku launch screens, which is interesting. Not a big difference here, just a slightly different dance routine, we'll call it. And we're almost there. And there we go, on the right, it loaded faster. I am actually able to scroll around, let's get into Netflix, and there on the left, I'm there. Still connected to Wi-Fi. The right is connected to Wi-Fi too, but the difference here is on OS 8, it seems to wait until it's connected. There we go. Let's back out to the home screen. So, you get the idea. Um, yeah, if you have, it, the 2016 Roku stick, and it's not a 4K TV you're using it on, I would upgrade. I don't see a reason to. I could do a couple of tests here on and on and on, but there really is no noticeable improvements in speed of performance. Now, 4K is more demanding, and the processing power may be re being reserved for that, for that reason, and may force a slightly slower response time. But I am running this on um, 1080p on both of these, so... I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, I've been doing my best to click on them sometimes. You've been seeing the wheels, the launch into apps and so forth. It seems like the um, 4K version does do some apps faster in the menus, but the 2016 seems to load video quicker. Why? Can't explain it. But there you go, side-by-side -side comparison, a little unboxing. If you have questions, comments, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. If you have a general question about um, core cutting Overall, join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We do a weekly Q&A live on YouTube right here from 8 p.m. Eastern for about an hour. I'm here answering your core cutting related questions. If you have any questions overall, uh, let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up. It really is helpful.